Hey you guys, what is going on? It's your boy Creative, and we're looking at Once Human today. And today we're gonna to be going through some things you need to do early in Once Human to make your leveling and playing experience that much better. The very first thing you wanna do early is craft and use your crossbow. Now your crossbow you can see here is one of your very starter weapons that you're gonna have, but it's gonna be your most valuable weapon over time, especially through at least levels like one to 15. And this is because you essentially don't have to spend any materials on actually building out a bunch of ammo and wasting it on early levels. If you wanna have fun, feel free to do that. But early on materials are a little bit harder to come by. So this can save you a bunch of time of having to craft different materials this way. So especially early on, we're able to hunt and take out enemies with one shot headshots because it does a ton of headshot damage. Essentially, you can just walk up to that enemy once you've shot them and you can just get your arrows right back. This is gonna give you again, infinite ammo, allowing us to not have to restock ammo a ton over time keep in mind at your weapons workbench you can go in here and actually craft a better crossbow so once you are walking around with your tier one crossbow eventually you're going to put down your weapons bench and unlock the tier two crossbow and eventually the tier three once you get to the tier two crossbow though make sure you unlock this this one and use this one over your tier one make sure you also go ahead and put a mod of any type that is one of the green mods the tier two mods on your actual crossbow itself to again give you some extra weapon damage and things like that and if it does start getting difficult for you again you can come in here to the weapons bench and calibrate your individual crossbow by using some materials to again give it even more damage if you do happen to be struggling the next big tip that you should do early in once human once you establish your base and get some of the basic crafting benches down as you can see i got a decent amount of this stuff around me once you get some of those basic things down, like your disassembly bench and everything else, you want to pay attention to your memetics. So your memetics is essentially your skill tree in Once Human. And one of the things you want to specifically look out for early on is your infrastructure. So your infrastructure is going to include things like smelting. It's going to include things like pickaxe upgrades and resource detection. Resource detection you don't have to worry about early, but one thing you want to worry about specifically is this middle row being these pickaxe upgrades and different casting. So the casting is gonna allow us to make higher level materials. They're gonna to use to make higher level weapons early on, the tier two and tier three weapons and pieces of armor. This is important, it gives us better gear and much better weapons. Better weapons give us better XP that we get from enemies because we can kill enemies much faster and much more efficiently. So because we can do much more damage this way, basically we wanna take this entire row in the middle as quickly as possible you don't have to take all of it right away but make sure before you start maxing some of these other ones out you max out this row again we unlock our bronze pickaxe steel pickaxe a lot more materials again much much faster and then as soon as you can unlock chainsaw early on you need a bunch of wood to make essentially a bunch of charcoal for these furnaces these are the regular furnaces before you get the electric ones and to make stuff in them they all require charcoal which means you need a lot of wood that chainsaw is going to help you get wood much faster because it takes your wood getting from this speed right here which is honestly pretty slow once you get the chainsaw to basically instant like this in under one second so once we unlock the resource gathering tools we use the resources to primarily build these independent secure units these are going to house our individual deviations now it's important that each one of these deviations that you get that gives you a decent bonus, you build a secure unit for it and you put it down. It doesn't matter if you have multiple of them repeating or not, because essentially they all are like your own pets and they all essentially work for you. Now, some of these like the butterfly one, if you click F on it, you can see it is a combat deviation. This is gonna give us uh, obviously combat centric uh, abilities and bonuses. But if you look at things like this one who is the digby boy which you can find just kind of from mining in some some other places is a territory deviation this means he's going to give us certain bonuses like you can see here on the right he will mine us ore and mine us a lot of it over time so you can get a lot of free ore this way early on that is an absolute must have and then the same for this one who is the logging beaver gives us free logging and then other ones like this one who again gives us different materials and then the one over here, Dreamcatcher, that gives us different things like uh, Trap of Silk and other things that we're going to use to craft stuff on the supplies workbench. So you almost won't even have to gather resources at an early stage if you can get some of these guys early, specifically 
the Digby boy. So make sure to do that. And also, even though this looks kind of glitched, make sure you meet some of these criteria, such as giving electricity and some of these other requirements. Again, it's going to help them refuel their deviant power much, much quicker. The more deviant power they have, the faster they have it, the more they can go out and actually mine this stuff because it requires a certain amount. It requires technically 30 the way we have it set for him to go out and work. So the more you have down here checked off, the faster he gets deviant power, the faster he mines you ore. Now, another thing to mention is always keeping up with your food, your sanity, and your hydration. Now, there's a couple easy ways to do this early on in the game. And again, if you're not familiar completely with this, your sanity is essentially something that will automatically decline as you go into like um, polluted zones or these strongholds or areas with a bunch of enemies. Over time, your sanity will continue to go down and it's just something that you have to refill. And you can see we have a current max HP reduction at 9%. That blue bar right there is our 9% max HP reduction because again, our sanity isn't fully maxed out. If it was fully maxed out, we would have a full white bar here. Next is hydration. You can see it affects things like our sprint speed and stamina cost and other things like movement speed down below. It's important you keep this at at least 30% or above so that we at least get the sprint speed bonus. But ideally you want to keep this at 60 to 100% at all times. So you want to try and keep it above 60, but never let it get below 30. And then finally our energy, which again gives us additional HP, extra weapon damage. Again, we want to keep this above 30%. Anything below that is bad and it decreases our load and the amount that we can carry, making it harder overall to go out and do things. You can see if our load is 120 to 140%, as we get over 100% load and meet those criteria, we're gonna lose some stamina and some movement speed. And then additionally, if we get over 140%, we're just gonna be slow as a snail. So keep that in mind as well. Now, early on, the best ways to handle these three down here, specifically are sanity gummies. So sanity gummies, you start with some of them and they're given to you pretty early on. There's a couple easy ways you can get this. The best way is to cook them on a stove of some sort. All you have to do is get you some boiled water and again, that's just found by any dirty water in a, in a river somewhere. You just collect that by drinking it. It'll collect it up. You come over here and you make boiled water. And then from there, you'll make these sanity gummies. It also requires sugar, which you will have to craft. Certain areas will have beets. You can find these kind of scattered throughout the world. Make sure if you find some, you grab a hold of them. And you don't really need that many early on. Make a couple things of sugar make some sanity gummies and you will never have to really worry about sanity again. Again, finding a river like this one I have out back on my house and then clicking G to drink it. Once you click G, you'll begin to actually not drink the water, but gather up that dirty water again. And then you can just go in there and cook it up. The best way to handle food early on is to just hunt deer. And then once you hunt deer, you can essentially just come in here and cook regular meat or that should get you through a lot of the beginning of the game. Other things like grilled mushrooms specifically are very, very good because it gives you energy and sanity both. But one thing is food goes bad very quickly in this game. So what can happen is if you actually want to cook the meat, you can go ahead and cook all of it and then you can put it in a refrigerator. It just requires two watts of power. Once you hook up power to it and put roasted meat in there, you can see it's now going to last over nine days. So you can just grab it as you need it. If you don't have a refrigerator yet, you can grab a meat dryer and then simply use salt and any sort of meat. And once you put the meat in there, it will make it into preserved meat. This preserved meat will last a lot longer and you can grab it out and cook it as you need it or as you just want to. And again, if you need salt, the way to make salt is to go get seawater and then just boil it on the stove to make actual salt. And again, seawater is just like you think it's gonna take to make it. You just need to go to an area with seawater, so somewhere on the coast, and do the same water process as the dirty water from the river. So armor, one specific thing with armor that you always wanna keep in mind, regardless of whether you have the starting baseball cap or some other level of armor, is always put mods on your gear. So it's free to put mods on your gear and you can always take them on and off again for free without ever having to do anything. You can see every one of my pieces of gear has a mod on it because they give you very good bonuses. So again, if you click into your piece of gear, you can put a mod on this piece of gear. The highest tier effect that you have on this gear is the highest you can put on the same given tier for the gear type. So you can see this blast helmet is a tier three piece of gear. This actual mod, the max effect it has is weak spot damage. That is a tier three mod effect. That means we can put this tier three mod on this tier three piece of gear. Again, because it's free to do that, make sure you have a mod on every single piece of weapon and armor you constantly have because you can just take them off of old pieces and put them on new ones. And overall, across the nine different mods you'll have on all of your gear at one given time, that's a lot of potential bonus, up to even 60 to 70% max damage overall just by having mods on your gear. 
Also keep in mind when you craft individual pieces of gear, especially early on in the workbench, one thing you want to keep in mind is you want to craft enough of these pieces of the same set type as you can. So for instance, this rustic jacket, you can see if we craft this at an earlier part in the game or later, we have these set bonuses right here. And then also on the pants, if we go to the rustic pants, we have the same set bonuses. That means you have to have four pieces of this rustic gear on. And if you have four pieces on, you get all of these bonuses right here. What that actually means is once you get the set bonus for a set, if you have other pieces that belong to different sets, you can put them on in addition. So that way you can have all of the bonuses from the first set and some of the bonuses from different sets for other pieces of gear. And the last thing I want to mention in Once Human is leveling. And that's because early on, it can be kind of confusing how the best way is to level, but it's actually very simple and please don't overthink it. There's a couple major ways. Obviously the first way is going to be to do your tasks. Your tasks are essentially your quests. And as you do these, you get a lot of XP each time you complete one of these. Even if it's a side quest, you get rewarded a lot for doing side quests because you get the XP for the quest and the XP for clearing out the enemies in the area that you're in that you would go to essentially anyways. So keep in mind, even the side quests are completely worth doing. So that's the main thing primarily to do your quests. Again, killing as many enemies as possible is also a big part of leveling. So don't shy away from trying to avoid enemies. Make sure you take out as many enemies as you can, because again, you do get a lot of XP from doing that. Early levels, you get a little XP. And again, it scales as you level up. So that way, eventually, if you kill 100 enemies, you're basically getting a level on, on its own. And finally, early on, this is one of the bigger ways to get a lot of levels very quick, is to find any town. Essentially, when you start, you will be in the Deadsville area of the Dayton wetlands. Once you go there, right in the middle, there will be an NPC that has this icon on him. That will be the commissions NPC. Once you talk to them and view the commissions, you can see I currently don't have any right now, but essentially there will be a list of commissions on this board that will be for easy tasks like boiling a certain amount of water or mining a certain amount of rocks. You wanna collect every single one of those that you can. You want to collect every one that you can or the easiest ones as you complete them you get a large amount of xp for completing each one and then once you complete all five for that week you'll again get a big xp chunk here right at the end as well completing those early can guarantee you at least like three if not three and a half levels very very early just from these tasks alone so again do those three things and you'll have no problem leveling throughout the game